This is Paul Masvidal from Cynic, and you're watching GuitarMessenger.com. What artists have you drawn inspiration from throughout through this whole journey so far? Um, I got, you know, it's funny, I keep using this metaphor of architects. You know, I'm a big fan of like, one of my favorite old architects is Buckminster Fuller. You know, he was like a futurist yeah. and stuff. And, uh, yeah, he was so cool. <laughs> and Eric Owen Moss, I don't know if you know his work, he's kind of really out there, cool stuff. Um, and, uh, and then Santiago Calatrava. I don't know if you know his work. He's in Spain. He's a Spanish architect. But I don't know. I think it's like, you know, music is like sound sculpture. You know, you're basically shaping sound molecules and, and trying to create these interesting shapes that you can't really see, but you hear. So there is some curious relationship there in terms of it being, you know, there is something there. And so we're always trying to f create this perfect shape and it's the endless search for the, the ideal design of, you know, subtraction and addition. And so, uh, but yeah, musicians, Brian Eno has been a big influence on me. Um, you know, I've been all over the map. I mean, Pat Metheny's huge in terms of as a composer and as a guitar player. Um, you know, I just, it's like Segovia as a classical guitarist. I mean, just a master of classical and especially his interpretation of great music. Um, you know, a lot of fusion guys, um, you know, even classic rock dudes, you know, just, just, you know, it doesn't it really, it's just, it, I'm a fan of, I've realized it's like a fan of good artists versus genres or styles. It's really unrelated to that. It's more just like, I just dig great artists, you know, and painters too, like Venosa. And I feel like in some ways there's been this attempt to capture a Venosa painting sonically, you know, like, what does that sound like? At an aesthetic level, the past, uh, both Focus and Trace in there had a very similar motif of um, hum human-esque figure kind of exploding into colors. Uh, Carbon-based anatomy um, is a little more nebulous in terms of what it's depicting. How do you choose the artwork for that? I, you know, it's funny, we don't. Venosa cho chose it, and he chose it right before he passed away. Because he died this past year, and uh, I had given him background on the songs and what they were about and everything. And I didn't realize he was on his deathbed when he was doing this. His wife, Martina, was assisting in the communication. He went there, you know, and uh, I, I like it. I got it later. At first, I was a bit resistant because it's one of his abstracts. It's very kind of dark and Giger-esque, you know. Um, and it was just like, whoa, okay. We usually have these really colorful... But and then I thought about it and I was like, this, it makes sense, you know, in terms of what this past year has been like for us, um, where this EP is being birthed from. And I don't know, it just kind of had a relationship with the music that made sense later. Did you feel like you were in a darker place as you were making this EP? I was definitely coming out of not necessarily a darker place, but uh, a, a pretty hard time, you know, where Sean and I had been there and back with some stuff and we it was a lot of life change and we moved into a house together just to kind of kind of take care of each other because we we needed each other's support and we've lived with each other before over the years but we had it was like whoa okay i mean we felt like we were battling some some ugly monsters out there some dark energy so yeah i think the roots of it a lot of a lot of pain and a lot of frustration got channeled into the, especially the song Carbon, you know, I mean, which has origins as an older song, but it kind of reemerged as this tune that uh, captures a lot, of, a lot of stuff. Um, but then there's, you know, light at the end of the tunnel too, you know, so it's kind of a mixed bag, you know, it's all, I feel like the, the EP has a lot of, uh, it's a lot of complex emotions, you know, kind of subtext 
that uh, people are going to have their own journey with. And I think that's the coolest music is when you kind of hear your own thing, you know, without being too literal about right, it, you know. Right. The EP you released actually before Carbon Based Anatomy, Retraced, was one of the more compelling statements I've, uh, I've heard as far as you just re-examining some of the tunes on uh, Trace mm-hmm. and Air. Was that born, did you make that because you had some regrets or misgivings about how some of Trace and Air came about, or did you feel like it was unfinished business? No, I mean, the reality is is that we had a month off between tours, and we were like, what's the most productive use of this month? And we're like, well, we know this record inside out. You know, we've been touring it for a few years. Um, let's, let's show people where these songs come from. And at first it was going to be like a bare bones acoustic kind of reinterpretation. But then when we got in there and started messing with them, only one of the songs did that. And the other three became kind of experiments that started out as just acoustic vocal. And then we kind of built on them and Sean started doing interesting drum stuff. And it was like, so they kind of took on a life of their own and it became this really productive, fun month. And so I didn't know it was really just a, a means of staying creative and staying in process, you know, with, with something and, and keeping things moving. What's your guitar rig like? Because we're all guitar players watching this right yeah. now. Um, I have uh, just, you know, an Axe FX with my good old trusty Steinbergers and a million and one patches. It's uh, there's so many sounds going on. <laughs> it's a, I know the, the, it's the, a lot of stuff. The man. new album is so huge. I can't yeah. wait to hear. Is it a okay. challenge pulling it off live or? Oh, well, it's definitely like deconstructed to some degree because you can't do like twelve guitar parts, right, you know. Right. But I think it it captures it. You know, it's it's the live thing. It's a different animal. It's fun, you know. I th- it's one of those things where you go to this extreme and you explore it, and then of course you're fantasizing about doing a really simple thing. You know, because there's just a lot of components to playing such complex layered stuff that you just kind of go, oh man, I just want a simple rig. I mean, just half of, you know, rehearsing for a tour is, is learning your pedal board. Like, you yeah. know, I mean, we, we just have, a, you know, an old um, ground control, but it's just constant patch changing, you know, yeah, from yeah. clean to dirty to like this sound, you know, there's just some songs, it's kind of ridiculous, you know, and it's, and sometimes I wonder, like, you know, does it make a difference, really? Do I need to do that specific sound and add that little extra block that's going to add that tiny bit of flanger, you know? But I don't know. I guess we're kind of sound geeks, you know, and we're really into it. And 90% of these PAs don't even capture that amount of detail. Yeah. But for, for us guitar geeks, we, uh, it matters, I guess, right? We're paying attention. What are some of the uh, amp models and uh, models that you I've got a bunch of like Wagner and Buddhas and stuff in terms of impulses of cabs. Uh, and I don't know, there's some, there's a bunch out there. Um, but yeah, I don't know, it's kind of a lot of blocks of drives, overdrives, um, amps, and just very kind of. Uh, sparse use of each kind of thing so they're all packed like my CPU is maxed on most of my patches <laughs> you can get into such precise detail it's kind of endless but I, I love that about it you know because if you know what you're looking for it's there mm-hmm. it's just a matter of how patient are you with it you know was there material that you wanted to put on the EP that didn't well we were working on or? a full length and, yeah, yeah. Uh, was... and uh, it was kind of like all the tunes were picked for the full length and um, I was kind of in process with them and the manager was just like, you know, it looks like this isn't going to come out till 2012 based on how, what's going on. Do you have anything else you can get out there right now that we can do to keep things moving and to get out and tour? Because it's been over a year since you've done anything. And I was like, let me look. And then Sean and I got in the room and I had a f- bunch of things that I thought were interesting that weren't going to be on the album and and uh, it turned in and then it's like six weeks we did this thing and I was so excited because it was so concentrated that it was there was a lot of improvisation that happened you know it was just a lot of free moments that became concrete parts of the composition mm-hmm. but it was just kind of totally improvised in the studio I mean in the in the rehearsal room mm-hmm. so 
it's kind of cool when that happens. So none of this is off the full length that you're. Oh no, towards. totally different stuff. Yeah. How's uh, how does it compare? Is it part of the same? I don't know. I feel like the new, or? the next record. I mean, I don't. It's hard to say right now because it's still a very early stage. But it's as it, as these demos. But it's in some ways like more proggy. The newer. Like this was more kind of an ambient soundscape, yeah. abstract feeling kind of thing, and the newer stuff's more like literal. I don't know, you know, I don't know really, because when you once you start getting into it, you know, and you start getting into the production side of it, it kind of has a life of its own, right. and it sounds completely different than where it's at now. So it's too soon to say, right, you know, at the moment. But the demos are, I'm really excited about what where it's at right now in terms of. What, what's there you know there's, in terms of the choices and the, the arc and the feeling of the album it's like oh this is going to be really interesting yeah well I can't wait to hear it I don't want to keep you from your warm ups thank really you really looking forward to seeing you yeah. good yeah. to talk to you